We're about to, um, come on. This chapter right here, guys, is really just talking about temporal resolution. We're about to add two new resolutions to our list, right? Um, what are other resolutions? Give me one resolution we already learned about, Myra, since you're looking at me. What is that? I wasn't asking about that when I was talking about a previous resolution that you know about. Spatial resolution? We're going to go more into that. Give me another one. Give me another one. All right, tell me what actual resolution is. To back, absolutely. Being able to identify two structures that are very close together, uh, but they're per parallel to the sound beat. Okay, being able to identify those two structures as two separate structures. Okay, we're also talking about lateral resolution as well, right? Being able to identify two structures laying closer together that are perpendicular to the sound beat, that are side to side, that are right by each other. Okay, we also talked about slight thickness or elevational resolution as well, correct? Slight thickness, elevation of resolution, being able, it's, it's about those off axis, um, being able to identify structures that are above and below the sound beam, correct? Yet they are still per, uh, perpendicular to the sound beam. Remember, when we look, when we're thinking about lateral resolution versus uh, elevation resolution, they're just 90 degrees from each other, right? Lateral resolution is the, determined by what, front end? Uh, Beam width. Beam width. What is um, uh, wind? What is axial resolution determined by? Spatial pulse length. Spatial pulse length. Spatial pulse length. Okay. And elevational resolution is also just determined by the uh, by the actual height of the PCT. All right. So um, this chapter right here, we're going to talk about temporal resolution. We kind of already talked about, we know what temporal means, right? Temporal is concerned time. all time, right? Temporal is concerned all time. New so, uh, Again, guys, uh, real time imaging. Real time imaging, right there. Uh, can you get that light for us or something? Right there. This one, my guy, doing. I did come with some AT motivation today. AT motivation. So I'm just going to read this to you. It's really long, but I'm going to read it to you real quick, guys. So a little extra time. I thought it really fit what we're doing right now. Uh, successful people practice harder and practice longer than unsuccessful people do. This is petty. <laughs> uh, success expert Peter Lowe has gleaned up success secrets from hundreds of people who are at the top of their profession. He said, the most common trait I have found in all successful people is that they have conquered the temptation to give up. Remember, that was kind of my message to you guys um, on Monday. No, was that Monday? No, that was Wednesday, right? When I when I have a little short PowerPoint about, you know, stand the course, stand strong. You know, don't stop when you're tired, but stop when you're done. My man, right there, right there, right there. Don't stop when you're tired, just stop when you finish, okay? Giving a little extra time requires just uh, more than just perseverance. It requires patience. The law process in my book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership says, leadership develops daily, not in a day. That can be said of any talent we try to cultivate and improve. So um, as you work to give a little extra time to your efforts, it is wise to maintain a longer view of the process of improvement. Such a perspective really helps. Gutzon Borglum, the sculptor who created the memorial to the American presidents at Mount, Mount Rushmore was asked if he considered his work to be perfect. <clears throat> it said, he replied, not today. The nose of Washington is an inch too long. It's better, it's better that way, though. It will erode to be exactly <laughs> right in 10,000 years. Now, that's patience. Now, that's patience. God, give a little bit more time, effort, and patience to do a difficult task or problem today. That's all I want to say. My, my gist of this is, guys, this ultrasound is all about repetition, you know, and you have to put a lot more time into it to get better at it. Right? You're not going to get better at it if you don't constantly practice it. You know, it's not that I'm so much better than you guys, right? It's the only only difference between me and you is that the time I've been doing it. I've been doing it 10 years, 11 years longer than you guys. So at some point, you guys are going to be better than me. Okay? So just put your time in, and um, you're going to get better. What they say, um, um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Right? So... Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. 
okay? So no matter how talented you can be, we're all at different levels, right? We all, like we, ultrasound is an individual modality. We really don't get to see each other scan. Like when I was a student, I couldn't tell you how Angie scanned because I was never in the room and she scanned, right? But we're all at different levels of scanning. We kind of see that in the scan lab, but at the same time, you know, um, it, it's gonna hit everybody at different times. At some point, it's gonna be, it's, I'm telling you, it's gonna be like from one day to the next, you're gonna be like, man, I got it now. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I, I, I understand the concept now. I know why I'm turning this transducer this way to elongate that vessel. You know? It just happens just like that from one day to the next, okay? And remember, guys, if, you, if, it, if it doesn't challenge you, then it won't change you, right? If you're not being challenged, then you're gonna be exactly the same. So accept all the talents in the clinic and just constantly just try to get better. Okay? That was my Monday motivation right there. Friday motivation though. I changed the JT motivation. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> all right guys, so objectives of real time imaging guys, temporal resolution is gonna be discuss frame rate and temporal resolution, okay? Um, and the system settings that determine frame rate. Those system settings include imaging depth, and the number of pulses in each picture. Okay? Those are sonographer control settings. Us as technology, we can actually control the imaging depth, right? Right? We control the imaging depth. When we turn the depth button, we're changing the imaging depth. We're also changing a lot of stuff about that image. We're changing the amount of energy going into the patient as well, because we're changing the pulse repetition frequency. Okay? And we increase the imaging depth, we're lowering the PRF because our, rep our pulse repetition frequency isn't as much. Right? We're not sending as much energy into the patient, okay? And we also control the number of pulses in each picture, and there's three ways to do that. I'm gonna talk about those today and on Monday, all right? So, let's talk about real-time imaging. So, ultrasound wasn't always, the image wasn't always acquired as fast as you guys see now. It wasn't always like, man, I, I'm moving the transducer and it looks like it's moving with me. Back, um, you can even, Dr. Black remembers when they used to have like static imaging. Static imaging meaning, I had that on the test guys, if you don't know what static imaging is, that's basically one frame. That's one picture. That's that, that picture you freeze and you press print, that's a static image, right? Because real time imaging is when we actually move. Remember I had the test question on there asking about uh, 4D? Mm -hmm. Remember 4D is real time imaging with um, the sound, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so that was the answer to that question. That was the answer to that question because it wasn't uh, 2D imaging or 2D static image. I had it in four different ways, but the answer to that question was real-time imaging with sound, okay? So, back then they used to actually take frame by frame. This is actually like a, a fluid field um, device right here because we know we need, we need a, um, a medium, right? We need some water or something that sound can travel through because sound just can't travel through the air. Mm -hmm. So this was an old school type of ultrasound device right here. They used to scan with one picture at a time. Imagine how long it took them to do one exam. Imagine how horrible those images were. Cause just think about this ultrasound machine we have right here that y'all hate. Y'all can't y'all can't stand Toby. I won't even get on Toby anymore, right? Imagine that was, those are considered good images, you know, compared to what these guys were looking at back then. So I don't even know how they were using this for diagnostic purposes. Okay, it was nearly impossible to image moving structures. Imagine trying to get an image on a moving structure, it would just be blurry, right? Because they can't, it's not acquiring images as fast. All right? So um, we've come up a long time now, and now we have what's called real time imaging. We're grateful for that. We're grateful for that. Okay? So real time imaging allows us to visualize structures such as the heart in real time. We're able to see those, um, those valves opening and closing in the heart. Okay? So nowadays, all modern ultrasound systems are capable of real-time imaging. You guys have never seen an ultrasound system that wasn't a real-time ultrasound imaging system. The frames are created and displayed very quickly, which give the impression of constant motion. But we know really ultrasound is not in constant motion, right? Sound just travels that fast that it has that appearance that it is in constant motion. But honestly, it's really taking picture by picture by picture, right? Because when you freeze, don't, when you freeze, you can roll back so far, right? You can scroll back so far and see, I don't know, maybe um, maybe 540 frames. I think that's the maximum that IE22 can hold. If you let it go for like 10 seconds and press freeze, 
I think it'll hold a 540 frames. So that's a lot of images being acquired in you know that short amount of time. Okay. Got to stop. Maybe you have any questions. I really thought this chapter was kind of. I thought it was a real kind of easy read. Yeah. I hope everybody read my uh, my handout because uh, you know it really. Uh, I think it helped you. Okay. So think of photography. Think of taking a photograph as a static image because it's just one single image. It's like an old school Polaroid. The image comes out. Okay. Think of a real time image that's creating a movie. Like when you use Cine Loop, right? Mm -hmm. When you use Cine Loop, like for instance, when you want to see, like say if you have a person who has gallstones, right? And you t and you want to see those gallstones or boot moving, you're going to turn up the cube, right? And if you happen to see them gallstones rolling down because of the gravity, I'm going to press the Cine Loop so that the doctor can see that those gallstones are, are going towards the fungus of the gallbladder. Okay? So static imaging, uh, static scan is a photograph, real time imaging is a movie. So let's talk about temporal resolution. <laughs> um, but first, we have to talk about typing. First, we have to talk about frame rate, because frame rate determines temporal resolution. Okay, frame rate determines temporal resolution. Okay, but frame rate is the ultrasound system's ability to create numerous frames each second. Okay, kind of similar to like um, frequency, you know. Um, but this is a, this is about the number of frames, the number of images that can be created per second. All right. So the frame is stands for. Do you mean the image? Absolutely. Or it means the imaging rate. That's the what it is, right? Frame rate. Frame rate. Yeah, the imaging rate. Remember, it's the it's it's like it's like um it's like hertz. It's like having it's like and it's, it's like having um you need an event and you need a duration, right? Because like my my event is frames. The duration is per second, right? Mm -hmm. Or per minute, however you want to break down that duration, okay? So frame rate is the number of frames uh, per second. Okay? The ability of ultrasound to create frames per second. You can actually see it on some ultrasound system. I have a video later that I took at my job um, where I'm showing you when you change certain things on the ultrasound system, you can actually see the frame rate changes or decrease the more I'm adding information to it. You can see it on the IU-22 as well. I really meant to bring it in here, but it slipped my mind. When Shepard left, it was like class was starting. So <coughs> frame rate is the most important operational parameter associated with an ultrasound movie, okay? Ultrasound movies aren't always as important, right? Because we don't take ultrasound movies often. We take pictures, we take images. So if you need a movie, frame rate is very important. If you don't need a movie, um, detail is more important, right? So that is always a trade-off between temporal resolution and frame rate and detail resolution. They okay? are lateral resolution, as you guys know, right? Okay, because remember, remember um, last semester I said that we have more than one focal zone that's going to increase lateral resolution, but it's going to decrease uh, temporal resolution because it takes so much more time to create that image. Remember we saying that last semester? Okay. So we just kind of expounded on that, right? All right. So frame rate, like I said, is determined by the so speed of sound in the media. We know the speed of sound of soft tissue is 1.54 kilometers per second, 154,000 centimeters per second, 1.54 uh, millimeters per microsecond. Okay. All our ways to know the speed of sound. No, those don't ever forget those numbers. I told you, I never let you forget. Okay. And it's also determined by the imaging depth, okay? The, um, the deeper we go, the frame rate is gonna decrease, right? Because it's gonna take a longer time for that sound to travel to and from. I'm sorry, to and back. Mm -hmm. To and back, it's gonna take a lot of time. So let's say if I'm imaging a thyroid, my frame rates are gonna be a lot higher than if I'm imaging with the liver. If I'm looking at the liver, right? Because the liver is so much deeper than the thyroid is. It's more, it's the thyroid is more superficial. So I'm able to send, sound is going back and forth really fast. My frame rates are clicking really fast because the sound is coming back so fast, okay? But if I'm going deeper into the body, then, you know, I'm not, my frame rate is gonna be lower, okay? So that's why imaging depth also determines uh, frame rate, okay? 
So imaging depth and the speed of sound through which that medium travels.